Make it count, leave a mark, build a name for yourself. Dream your dreams, chase your heart above all else. Make a name the world remembers. But all an empty world can sell is empty dreams. It got lost in the light when it was up to me. is the only name to remember and I I don't want to leave a legacy I don't care if they remember me only Jesus and I only that one life to live Second point to him, only Jesus. All the kingdoms built, all the trophies won, will crumble into dust when it's said and done. Is all that really matter? Did I live the truth to the ones I love? Was my life proof? There's only one whose name will last forever. And I, I don't want to leave a legacy. I don't care if you remember me. Oh, Jesus. And I, Hey everyone, my name is James and I'm the worship leader here. We've got a few things coming up this week we want to invite you to, so take a look. If you've been paying attention to video announcements the past few weeks, you would have seen that we would have had a few large events coming up that are especially hands-on and interactive. And since health officials are now encouraging social distancing and minimal interaction, we've actually decided to cancel or postpone a few things coming up. First, we are gonna be canceling our Lenten night of worship and prayer this Wednesday. I know, it's one of my favorite services we do all year, but what makes this service special is all the hands-on interactive stations. Second, we are canceling powwow this Saturday because again, lots of people in a public space handling food. And then finally, we are gonna be postponing our garage sale. Now we're still gonna do it in April, so save your donations, but it's not going to be Saturday. Our priority for everyone is to be healthy during the season, so thanks for your understanding. Just a quick update on Holy Cross. A couple of days I want you to be aware of is on the 21st and 22nd of March, um, the pastor uh, who was there is now retired as a March 1st, we have a retirement party for him. 
Uh, we're going to recognize them in the worship services and there's going to be a reception after each of the services, Saturday at 5 o'clock service on Sunday morning, 9 o'clock a.m. So if you want to attend that as one of those, you're more than welcome to. Also on the 28th of March, we're going to be having a work day at Holy Cross and it's going to be going from 8 o'clock a.m. till noon and the location is on Hayden Road, just a quarter mile north of, of Thomas. So we We'd love to have you come if you want to bring some rakes or different things too. There's some, a lot of different things we can do, something for everybody. And then too, reminder that we have three Tuesday meetings each month. The first Tuesday of the month focusing on the North Valley Christian Academy. And the third Tuesday focusing on how we can help at Holy Cross. And the fourth Tuesday focusing on house churches and also nursing home ministry. So you're welcome to attend any of those to find out some of the things we're doing. A lot of exciting things are happening. So there you go. We hope to see you at these things. And as always, you can find more info in your bulletin and anytime online. And speaking of online, we're also streaming our services just in case you're not feeling well. So stay on home and worship God through this new online streaming. And to be precautious, we're doing a few things differently for a season until whatever illness or coronavirus is contained. So right after these announcements, we're gonna be skipping the time of greeting and going straight into worship. We're also gonna be having only individual cups for communion and not the common cup. And rather than doing any exit greeting after service, Pastor Mike or Mike Edge will be in the Welcome Center. They still want you to come on by and chat, but they're not gonna be shaking hands or doing that Christian side hug. And on another note, I should also mention that we've got a welcome card in your bulletin, as well as a prayer card in the seat back pocket in front of you. We encourage you to fill these out and place them in the offering basket later on in service. And if you're joining us from online, you can fill out that same welcome card and share any prayer requests you have with us right on our website. Now, if you're new here, we want to encourage you to swing on by the Welcome Center so that we can get to know you and that we can make a donation to a nonprofit in your name. With all this widespread fear out there, we know that God is in control and that we can go to Him for strength and comfort. So with that, let us stand and begin worship. Well, good morning. Let's worship our God today. Sing our Father everlasting. Our Father everlasting, the all creating one, God Almighty. Through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus. Our judge and our defender. Our judge and our defender suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious light. Forever seated high. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe, I 
I believe in life eternal. I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in the saints' communion and in your holy church. I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus, for I believe in the name of Jesus. Sorry about that. Guys, I started playing the wrong song there. <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead. Uh, here we go. Let's try it again. Take two. <laughs> Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. of heaven, you conquered the grave, you free every captive and break every chain, oh God, you have done great things, we dancing your freedom awake and alive, oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. Faithful through every storm, you'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things, and I know you will do it again. For your promise is yes and amen. You will do great things. God, you do great things. You free every gap and break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God. You have done great things. Above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things. Yeah. Hallelujah, God, above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free 
every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. He lifts the freedom away and alive. Oh Jesus, I say that you may lift it high. Oh God, you have done great things. You have done great things. Amen. You may be seated. As we continue with the worship this morning. Lord, we lift up our souls. We put our trust in you, God. Teach us your ways and guide us in your paths. We bring before you today the things for which we are ashamed, for willfully acting with less than good intentions, for abusing your faithfulness, God, by sinning with our thoughts, words, and actions. God, we're sorry for all the things that we do that are contrary to what you would have us do. So hear our silent confession now. Forgive us, God, and cleanse our hearts and minds of all that prevents us from loving you and loving our neighbor. May our lives be marked by faith in you. We pray this in the name of Jesus, knowing that you hear us. Amen. Amen. Now, we're about to sing a song. It's one of my favorite songs as of recently. In the chorus, it says this. It says, all my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so good. In Psalm 15, 4, it says, He always does what he promises, no matter how much the cost. And I think even in the midst of the chaos, and we're going to be talking about that a little bit later on in our sermon, we can still remember his promise from Romans 8. We talked about it a lot last week, saying that we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. So our, our faithful God promises in his word to forgive us of our sins if we come to him in humble confession. So having confessed your sins this morning, know that you're forgiven. And we God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. One, two, three, four. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me.
chapter 14 it says peace I leave with you my peace I give to you not as the world gives do I give to you let not your hearts be troubled neither let them be afraid see today we're gonna be taking a look at trying to find peace in the midst of chaos and I think especially today with everything that's going on and there's just a lot of people out there that are afraid right now but in God's word he says to not let your heart be afraid so as we prepare for our sermon, let me ask you this question. What is stressing you out? And it's not, is there something stressing you out? But it's, what is stressing you out? Because we all know that we all deal with stress each and every day. And as you guys ponder over that, we're going to dismiss our children for our children's church. Good morning, St. Mark. If you're wondering where I am today, I'm at Holy Cross and the second of four times that I'm going to be here this year, sharing with them St. Mark's love for them, uh, encouraging our partnership and, and sharing with them a message about Jesus' love. Today, if you haven't been here, we're continuing on in this series that we've been doing on when things don't go according to plan. And today we're going to take a look at another aspect of that, which is this whole area of stress in our lives. And especially with the coronavirus and everything going on that's just crazy right now, people are experiencing even more stress than normal. It was interesting, though, there was a cover article in Parade Magazine just a few years ago that was called Stress Busters. And I love that title, but it read this way. Stress is taking a terrible toll in the nation's health and economy today. 83% of U.S. workers suffer from work-related stress. More than 68% of all visits to physicians are for stress-related disorders. Think about that. Two out of three doctor's visits because of stress. Stress causes one million workers to miss work every single day. Job stress costs American industry more than $300 billion a year in absenteeism, in lost productivity, and in accidents. 
Only 43% of U.S. employees think that their employers actually care about their work-life balance, which is crazy. Every week, 112 million people take medication for stress-related symptoms. And finally, work-related stress causes 120,000 deaths and results in $190 billion in healthcare costs every single year. All that to say is that we're living in a pretty stressful world today. So maybe I should stop at this point and just ask you, how are you doing with the stress thing? Probably not very well, but if you're not sure, it's okay. I found a quiz. And this quiz will tell you how well you personally understand the stress in your life. See if you can complete any one of these sentences. I'm ready to throw in the towel. I'm at the end of my rope. I'm just a bundle of nerves. My life has fallen apart. I'm at my wit's end. I'm about to come unglued. I feel like resigning from the human race. See, if you got any one of those rights, you're pretty much a pro at stress in our world today. And in the Phoenix area, just so you know, it's one of the capitals of stress in America today. And it's truly amazing what people will try to do to deal with this whole area of stress. Therapy, fads, diets, even cults, you name it. Someone you know has probably tried it. But the Bible, it's just so different. It has a different way of dealing with stress than our world does. In fact, in John 14, 27, Jesus said this, I leave my peace with you. Peace. I, I give you my own peace, and my gift is nothing like this peace of this world. So don't be distressed. That's another word for stress. And don't be daunted. So Jesus actually says a couple of pretty important things here. First, he says that peace is a gift. God's peace is actual, uh, actually a gift to us. And, and peace of mind is not something that you work for then. It's not something you earn. It's not something you buy. It's not something you learn. It's not something you search for. It's just a gift. And God's peace of mind is so different from the world's. In the first place, it's not fragile like the world is, right? In fact, did you know, I found this interesting, that in the last 3,500 years, 3,500 years, we've only had 286 years of peace during that time. You know, actual peace where there's no wars, no conflicts going on. In other words, we just don't have much peace in this world. But human peace has always been based on circumstances. If everything's okay, then I'm at peace, right? But if everything is chaos, then I'm not at peace. But the Bible says something very different. It says that peace is an internal thing. So today I want us to take a look at how can we actually be at peace in the midst of chaos? How can I be strong under stress? God actually gives us some things this morning to think about. Actually, prescriptions to this very thing. And one of the first things that God says is receive my pardon. Receive God's pardon. In Romans 5.1, it says, Since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So here's the deal. You are made to live in harmony with God. And, and when you're out of harmony with God, it causes stress. And I'll tell you, right there is the greatest source of stress in your life today. Because when you're out of harmony with God, nothing else clicks. In fact, it's like God has created this God-shaped vacuum in our hearts. And, and when that's not being filled by Him, right, we get lost. We, we get nervous. We get stressed. We get anxiety-ridden because we're trying to figure out everything by ourselves. And we know something's missing. We're just not sure what. But when that vertical and the horizontal are out of order, our life's a mess. So the Bible says to experience peace, you need to first receive God's pardon, His forgiveness. Because the number one source of stress today in our world, psychologists tell us, is guilt. Why? Well, think about it. Is anybody here perfect? I know you guys are pretty close, but the answer is still no. And so we all make mistakes, and I don't live up to my own standards, much less God's or yours, and neither do you. And because we all make mistakes, we all feel guilty at times. And that, my friends, causes a ton of stress in our lives. So the Bible first and foremost says we need to receive God's pardon in Jesus Christ. How? Well, it tells us. It says we are justified through faith in Jesus. Now, what does that word mean? I think kind of a cool way to think about it is this. Justified means just as if I'd never sinned. It's there where God wipes the slate clean, where he washes down the whiteboard, right? WD-40, by the way, works really good at that. I found that out the other day. But, but God is greater than WD-40 and that he can clean our lives and our souls. And so even if there was no such thing as heaven, and there is, but even if there wasn't, I'd become a Christian just to have a clear conscience, just so that I could sleep at night because guilt causes stress. But the problem today is that 
way too often, even Christians who know that they're forgiven, in their head, they just don't feel forgiven. Even Christians who know they're forgiven don't receive it. So again, solution number one is that we need to receive God's pardon. Dr. Wesley Weatherhead once said, the forgiveness of God is the most powerful therapeutic idea in the world. And if a person can really believe that God has forgiven him or her, he or she can be saved from neuroticism. I just add to that hell and frustration and anxiety. Micah 7.18 says, Who is a God like you who pardons our sins and forgives? I mean, who does that? You delight to show mercy. God is just sharing here that he is actually eager to clean our slate. He wants to. He's willing to. He's ready to clear your consciences. Because again, there is no peace of mind without a clear conscience. The word pardon means to release from punishment. It means to be forgiven. I read recently about a man who committed a crime like 30 years ago, and he kept it a complete secret. Finally, he confessed it, and he made restitution just recently, and he said this, I was living in a personal hell for 30 years. We could stop with that and just think about the fact that God says, I want you to have blanket coverage, right? Total forgiveness for everything that you've ever done wrong. Do you think that would be, give a little bit of peace of mind in your life? Absolutely it would. So settle this issue. God wants to forgive you. He wants to wipe your slate clean. He wants to forgive you of all your past. He wants to give you that forgiveness over and over and over and give you a do-over in life. And if we allow Jesus to do that for us, it allows us in a wonderful way to get rid of the guilt from the past and all the stress that seems to go along with it. There's another thing in Scripture that God gives us, and it's this. It says, recognize my presence, he says. <laughs> recognize God's presence. In Romans 8, 6, it just says, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. It is determined by what you focus on. And so what I want you to learn today is this, to make your first response to every crisis, Lord, I realize that you're here with me. If you'll do that, your stress level will reduce significantly. Because the reality is, is that you're not facing anything by yourself. God's promise is that he is with you. In Psalm 46, 1 and 10, it says, God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. And he says, be still and know that I am God. I love that verse. Be still and know that I am God. Now, the background of this verse is pretty interesting, too. There was over 180,000 enemy troops that had surrounded the city of Jerusalem. All the people of Israel in Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem. And they were about to destroy the city. The Israelites were getting uptight. They were getting freaked out. They were getting stressed. And God just says, relax. I'm still in control. Five minutes before they were about to attack the city, God caused a plague to come down and to decimate the enemy. And the city of Jerusalem was saved. God says to us again, he says, don't worry. I'm your ever-present help. I'm always present. You need to recognize my presence because I love you and I've got you in your mind. Notice again, it says, be still and know. In Hebrew, it says, be still. It means just to let go or to ease up, right? Pascal once said, all of man's problems come from this inability to sit still. And it's true, I think. The more hurried you get, the more worried you get. In fact, if there is anything I could do for you this week, it would be to get you to establish a regular daily time where you and God just kind of hang out, sit still, and you focus anew on His promises. But unfortunately for most of us, we're just so busy that we couldn't hear God speak to us if we wanted to. And so the first thing that we've got to learn is just to be still, to be with Him. And then God says this, and know. And the word know in Greek is the word that means the most intimate kind of knowledge. And so it's not just knowing about, right? There's a difference between knowing about God and knowing God. You can know a lot about God, Satan sure does, but you can know the facts, you can know the history, but, but God says he wants you to know him, really know him personally. He wants to have a relationship with you. And in that knowing is where ultimately the comfort comes from. So God says, be still and know that I'm here. Then he goes on to this last one, which is pretty important, and it's this. I must trust God's plan, right? I must trust God when I don't understand why things are happening to me the way they are in this life. Even when it doesn't make sense, he calls me to trust in him. In Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and don't lean on your own understanding. 
in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. There are a couple of verbs in this in these sentences that I just want you to note though real quick. Trust is one of them and that verb don't learn lean is the other one. First it says trust in the Lord with all your heart and that just means depend on him. When? When it doesn't make any sense. Why did I get fired God? I don't know. Trust in me, he says. Trust in the Lord even when everything's outside of your control because it's not outside his control. And then the other verb is don't lean. Don't lean on your own understanding. This is one of the number one reasons why even Christians don't have peace of mind today. You're trying to figure everything out by yourself. But the fact is, life is, is that many, if not all of the things in life, you're just never going to figure out. There are some things you're just going to ask questions that are not going to be answered. And the most common, natural, normal reaction to an illness or a crisis or a loss or a death of someone that we love is, why? What do you do with the whys of life? And the thing is, if we can just take a step back just for a second, is that God does not promise to explain everything in our lives. And if we take a step back, he doesn't even owe us that explanation. He's God and we're not. And if you understood it all, you would be God. But the neat thing is that you don't have to understand it all, but you do have to trust him. And the testimony that I've heard from people over and over and over and over is that in the middle of the crisis, in the middle of the situation, in the middle of the loss, when I finally stopped trying to figure it all out and just started trusting, the peace of mind flooded my heart. Again, God is way more interested in comforting you than he is in explaining everything to you. Some things you're just never going to figure out on this side of heaven. That's why he says, lean not on your own understanding. And one of the things that I'm slowly learning, let me emphasize that slowly, because I'm kind of a headstrong in a lot of ways, and I'm a certainly control enthusiast, but one of the things I'm learning is that I don't have to figure out all the whys and the hows or the when God is going to do what he's going to do in order to have peace. I can just have peace about it because I trust him. Jesus once said it like this, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust in me. You see, that's the antidote to all the stress that we're feeling. It's not about perfect circumstances, but it's about a person. And that person's name is Jesus, the Prince of Peace. And the reality is, is you'll never have ultimate peace in your life until the Prince of Peace becomes the resident president of your life. And when the Prince of Peace becomes the president in your life, it flows out into your lifestyle and you just don't experience stress at the same level anymore. Why? Because maybe you realize for the first time that he's still actually in control. I think often in the middle of a, a storm, there's a, a center that is super quiet. I love that imagery. While everything else is blowing apart, there's that quiet center. And God says that we can have that kind of peace in the middle of our storms, that it's available. But it starts by praying, God, I want to start recognizing your presence on a day-to-day, moment-by-moment basis. I'm not in this by myself, that you are with me every step of the way. I want to learn to also to obey your principles. I want to get into your word. I want to spend time with you every single day, just being quiet and hearing from your promises. I want to trust your plan, especially when I don't understand what's happening. And I'm going to try, Lord. Well, I'm going to actually try to quit trying to figure out why everything else is happening in my life. I'm going to try more and more just to start trusting in you and not leaning so much on my own understanding. And then I'm going to ask for your provision when I have a need instead of freaking out, instead of panicking, and I'm going to pray. So as I do that, Lord, I pray for your peace. And my friends, my promise to you is that as you pray, he will come and he will forgive and he will renew And he will grant you his amazing peace. For this idea of peace, and it always comes from trusting our Savior. So go in that peace today. Let me pray. God, we love you so much, and we thank you for Jesus. And we thank you for just the reminder today that you've got things. Father, in the midst of the craziness of what's going on now with the coronavirus, in the midst of the craziness of the election, and every time we turn on the news, and in the midst of the craziness even of our lives, We need these reminders today that you've got us, that you love us, that we're yours. We need the reminders that you're walking every step of the way with us. We need the reminders that we are forgiven and loved by you. And we need to be reminded that we can trust you. 
Father, fill us with those promises today. Fill us with those words from your word and give us peace. And we pray that today in the name of Jesus and all God's people said, amen. We just want to minimize the amount of shared contact with things that you guys are exposed to this morning. So on your way out, um, the offering plates are going to be on some pedestals back there. So you can drop your offering in there, drop your welcome card in there as well. But also we want to make sure you guys know of some other opportunities. There's a little pamphlet out at the Welcome Center that lets you know how you can give electronically or through text message. And if text message is something that interests you, uh, we'll have the phone number up on the screen and you just text a little dollar amount to that and it'll walk you through the setup. And so we're going to play some music as we worship at this time and, and we're going to go ahead with that. to Jesus I I surrender all all to him I freely give I will ever love and trust him with my heart in his presence daily live I surrender all to Jesus Christ my King I surrender everything oh I surrender all my hopes and all my dreams I surrender all and give you everything All to Jesus I, I surrender all, humbly at his feet I bow. Pleasures of this world, I will gladly trade, take it all Lord, take me now. I surrender to Jesus Christ my King I surrender everything oh I surrender all my hopes and all my dreams I surrender all
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, indeed, that is our prayer this morning. I surrender. We surrender. We surrender to you, Lord, the the King of the universe, the true living God, the God who is in control. And so, God, we pray that as we are in this midst of chaos in our world, what an appropriate, relevant sermon today to talk about fear, to talk about peace, and to talk about how ultimately you're in control and how, what it looks like to trust you in your ways. And so, God, we pray that as we leave this place here and we head into our, our week, we pray, Lord, that we can apply these things. We can apply about how we can trust your plan, about recognizing your presence, and as well to receive your pardoning, to receive your forgiveness in our lives. And so, Lord, we pray as well for those who are affected by the coronavirus. We pray for healing, and we pray as well, Lord, that this pandemic gets contained. And then as well, Lord, we pray that we're able to uh, return to our our lives as normal. And so, God, we pray all of these things in your name. And we also pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord, and indeed I do say the peace that God is able to give us, be with you, and welcome now to our Lord's table. this time, I'm going to invite you just to take some moments to reflect on that peace that God offers, especially now. Reflect on the peace that he offers through the the body and blood here, through forgiveness that he gives you.
So I'm actually going to give the benediction from over here. You know why? Because our live streaming camera is over here. So that way they can see me. Hey, Mike. Hey, James. Speaking of the live stream, 
Please wanna, tell wanna, me. Want to hear something cool? I do. There's I do. about as many people watching online right now as there are in this room. Right. So, Whoa! How cool is that? Look at that. So actually, we are making history. And so today, this is the first time ever we have a live stream going. You can go directly to our website on the home page there. You can be able to see it. So if you're not feeling well, you can stay at home. And there's even a communication card and all that kind of stuff. But with the live stream, hi, Mom, by the way. I, I also want to say this, that uh, Pastor Mike several months ago had picked out the sermon for today. And I don't think he's smart enough to know exactly what was going on, but God was. And so what a relevant sermon for the peace in the midst of chaos today. So friends, go with this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace, his peace. And all God's people said, amen. amen. I'm counting on, 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 I'
Going on, God. 